Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My tongue is rumbling a little bit but that's okay. Just means I'm hungry. So I'll uh, I have something to eat after doing this. So please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Because it may cause drowsiness. Ooh. So, what is the date today? It is the ninth, yeah, the ninth of January, two thousand and twenty, and it's. Thursday which yeah it's alright <laughs> it's okay I'm okay with that it's weird all a weekend or over a weekend and so much has happened in the world so it's uh, it's been quite quite eventful but for the looks of it things are starting to calm down so that's good which I'm pleased about another thing I'm pretty pretty pleased about is the stats for my podcasts have risen considerably uh, this year for some reason and that's really cool I like that I like that a lot It's one of my, it's kind of like a hobby of mine, I think, studying the stats. It's not, you know, it's not for everyone. It's not, it's not probably the most exciting thing for a lot of people. But for me, I just love it. I do, 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 do. So basically, so far, don't worry, I'm not going to go into great detail so far total downloads for my for all of my podcasts on Spreaker this is since the 21st of November 2018 671,433 with 22,142 plays and the current month it's just risen. Uh, for example, Wednesday the 1st of January, I had 2,009 downloads. Then the 2nd of January, 2,564 downloads. The 3rd of January, 2,398 downloads the 4th of January 2,475 downloads Sunday the 5th of January 2,844 downloads Monday bit of a bit of a leap 
Monday the 6th of January 5,528 downloads. Tuesday the 7th, which was two days ago, 4,184 downloads. And yesterday, although t- yesterday is not finished yet, there's still another hour or so left until um, those stats will be finished. But I've got 3,006... Actually, it's not. It's more than that. It's actually more. 3,692 downloads for Wednesday. 3,692. As I said, there's still another hour hour or two left. So that's going to be probably about 600... 3,800 or something, maybe even 4,000. So that's quite groovy. I'm quite pleased. I'm quite pleased with that. And just looking at the overall websites, uh, the podcasts. Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis is now 116,962. Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply is 134,934 downloads. Uh, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. This podcast is 88,374. I can't wait for that to be 100,000. It's also got 5,784 plays. So it's got the highest plays of any of the other podcasts. Relaxation hypnosis for stress and anxiety, 64,305. And sleep hypnosis weekly, 38,501. And lastly, uh, sleep insomnia hypnosis, 124,863 I say lastly it's not really lastly because I've got other ones I've got another 30 podcasts or 28 podcasts but they're the main ones and so let's say how many have I had on the the top podcast how many downloads have I had today or yesterday oh according to this one that doesn't seem right 100 that's it that's the one so yesterday I had 836 downloads on my hypnosis for sleeping deeply It's not playing the game. Oh, there it is. At the most recent... Yeah, yesterday. No. Yeah, yesterday, the 8th of January, 174 downloads for episode 295 of the Let Me Boy to Sleep. What I've noticed... Is the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast of grown this year? As in the amount of downloads per day. So, yesterday, 352 downloads. The day before, 367. The day before that, 344 downloads. The day before that, 358. And that's just on the just on this podcast. This tablet's t- it's not good for moving stuff around. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so I'm quite pleased at this rate. 
I don't know how long it's going to take to get to 100,000 for this podcast. Based on 400 a day. What's that a month? 400 times by 30. 30 times by 1. <laughs> it's 30. 30 times by 10 is 300. No. 30. No, 300. Yeah, 300. 400 times by 10 is 4,000. So 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's about 12,000 downloads a month for this podcast. And then another 12, 24, probably another 24 to 30,000 downloads of this podcast on other podcasts. So 24, 48... 24, 48, 22, 4, 24, 48, 58, 68, 72. That, wow, so I'm getting over 70,000 downloads of these Let Me Bore You to Sleep recordings. every month does that sound right it doesn't sound right to me 400 times by 3 400 times by 10 4,000 4 no I got it wrong so it's 4,000 it's 12 times by 3 it's 12 24 yeah that makes sense so 12 24 44, 48, no, 12, 24, 36, so 70,000 sounded nice didn't it, but about 36,000 downloads a month of these boring recordings at the moment, god that was boring, that really even for me, I like the stats but that was too boring for me, I do apologise too boring what other podcasts have I got I've got a few that don't get many and but they've still got more you know like the self help and self development hypnosis podcast it's got 18,153 downloads but I got 22 downloads yesterday, 30 the day before, and 92 on, well, four days ago. So it kind of, it fluctuates. I wonder what other ones. Sleep Hypnosis of Music, 13,863. Hmm. So I think I did tell you that I've uh, got my website, I've been working on my website, really um, trying to get it just trying to get it up and running really, trying to get it um, It is up and running and it is functioning and it is working. But there's so many episodes of recordings that aren't on there. I mean, hundreds of recordings of mine that aren't yet available on the website. And it's just taking forever. At the moment, I mean, this week I've put the chronic pain relief sessions on there. I put the sleep hypnosis sessions on there. I'm now in the process. I've also put all the other courses on there. 
So they're all organised, easy to stream or download for free. I've also put the... I'm in the process of putting all of the relaxation recordings, the hundreds of those that are on there. Um, I think I've up to about 70 or 80 so far that I've done. So that's going to take probably another couple of days before that's finished. And then I will put these self help self-development recordings on there as well and I'm going to try probably I'd like to do some kind of organisation with those because there's recordings for various different things like tinnitus uh, self-harm and flatulence uh, no there's no flatulence um, you know eating issues just all kind of stuff like that so I'll try figure a way of organising it and maybe just have a, a specific page just with everything kind of uh, listed and linked to the different um To the different collections, yeah, and then, which is something that I've I did about three days ago or two days ago, something that I should have done many years ago, but I haven't, and I realise why I haven't because it's extremely, um, I'm not sure what the right word is, but. I'll explain the process and you can make up your own word. I've been, I went through some of my older sleep recordings. And I edited them, so I downloaded them off of the podcast re-edited tried to clean it up a little bit um, cutting off the introduction and just sort of doing it so it's a little bit nicer the introduction and the fading in fading out at the end scanning through it to try and cut out maybe some of the sounds that were not needed and then saving it and replacing the file on the podcast so my intention is to do this with all of my older recordings which means I've set myself up for a huge huge task I just wish there was a way some kind of service where I could or some kind of website where I could go online, upload the audio and it kind of gets processed so it comes out the other end clearer, cleaner, no background sound and just uh, crystal clear quality. But as far as I'm aware, apart from those in the know with the knowledge and the money and the equipment to do such things and the time uh, I'm not really able to do that so I'm going gonna, gonna to need to settle for just tidying up the stuff you know taking cutting out as much of the unnecessary sounds and just make it a little bit more professional-ish kind of yeah that's kind of where that's, yeah that's kind of saying kind of a lot am I it's pretty much what I'm wanting to do yes 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 oh let's have a drink there 
so just to remind you if you like what I do leave a review ever so pleased with that rhyme that's a good rhyme I think it's possibly the best rhyme ever in the history of rhymes and the video facility to leave a video review is now functioning perfectly on my website after a little bit of tinkering because it wasn't working but it is now so I look forward to seeing some videos of people saying lovely things hopefully hopefully of course I suppose you could write a video saying horrible things but or, or I don't see what the point of that would be so yeah that'd be really groovy 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 bagooby bagooby it would be lovely so thank you so today oh I woke up early because I was looking after my friend's dog um, so I didn't really get any proper sleep until he got back and then I went back to sleep till about 4 or 5 something about 4 o'clock and what I noticed what I noticed is this let me tell you let me tell you what I noticed it's getting lighter half past four is now lighter than it was I don't know two weeks ago or last week so it's starting to get lighter so I'm actually fairly pleased because there's something special about that and there's also something for those that are awake during the night you get to experience something that people who are asleep don't and that's the sunrise uh, at one point you know sort of three o'clock in the morning or half three you know when it starts to get light it's just it's a be- it's lovely it's actually really nice and also being awake uh, sleeping during the summer not sleeping during the summer but sleeping uh, during the day in the summer is okay because you're basically going to bed when it's light and you're waking up when it's light so if I go to bed at 6 get up at 2 in the afternoon it's still light for another uh, what 10 hours or eight hours, nine hours, I don't know, till about 10 o'clock or nine o'clock. So yeah, I quite like that. Oh. What's that? Now I've got the TV on, but it's on mute. Just showed a picture on the front of a newspaper and I wasn't quite sure what it, what it was. So yeah. This year's a bit strange. I'm kind of looking at the the website as I build it and starting to realise that I've kind of got a business there. Because it is a shop. Of course everything on there is free, but it's still it's still a shop. It's still an online retail um professional I say professional but you know what I mean it's it's something that um, is usually used to sell things so I'm using the same platform that people have online shops with but I'm just not selling anything it's, everything is free to download So I'm just thinking, you know, if, if in kind of a worst case scenario, 
where I just did, literally didn't have any money coming in to buy food or pay, you know, to, to buy pay the rent or anything. I could just spend a day changing everything from three to one pound each and get rid of the podcasts and just, you know, only have my stuff available on my website. And then hopefully I'll be able to earn a living out of it. But I don't actually want to do that because I like it all being free. That's it's what I like. It's one of the things I like about it. You know, I see people who are online trying to make money, and I've got no issue with other people making money. You know, this is this is my society that I've been, I've grew, up, I've grown up in this society, which is dependent on people making money. You know, that's the way this society is structured. And I wish anyone well that's successful uh, financially or otherwise. I think good luck to you. But I do, I do wonder sometimes when people have got how much they charge for so little. Sometimes that's why that's why I like Netflix because. They're the lowest, they, they charge the least amount out of all of the other platforms, you know. I think Netflix charges, is it five ninety nine a month? I think. Amazon is seven ninety nine, and uh, Now TV, I think it's even more now. Might be seven ninety nine or eight ninety nine, and Netflix. It's got so much to offer. It's got so much content. For me, that's a good value. Great value for money, and I like that. I like the idea of like if someone was gonna pay for something that they'd get a lot because I like to give away lots of stuff for free but I like the idea of giving loads and loads and loads of stuff which I do and I like that I like the idea of having choice and if there was more than just me doing this like I mean there is more than me there's other people doing this stuff but if I could kind of not clone myself but uh, create more content like huge amounts more I would I'd be creating 10, 20, 30, 100 recordings a day if I was able to but I'm I'm not physically able to do that so you know I think two is probably the most maybe three a day one at least but sometimes I can do three but two is I think two is a good day if I can record two different recordings like yesterday um, I did one yesterday but the day before no I did two the last two days I've done two recordings so yesterday I did let me bore you to sleep we episode 295 and I did a recording for the relaxation hypnosis for stress and anxiety and that was episode of number 69 and the day before that I did let me bore you to sleep 100 nights no, at 294 and I think it was Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis 171 or 172, I'm not sure. 
so that's quite cool I think two a day is good it's just finding the right time to do it because I was making the 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 one today or yesterday during the day the relaxation hypnosis for stress and anxiety and my friend's dog was basically just following me around and he's very heavy footed it's a big old dog and it's like it was making a, quite a bit of sound and it was just I struggled a little bit to concentrate on what I was doing so having background sound can distract me at times especially when I'm doing something that's specific see with these recordings I just talk about anything anything and everything and yeah 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 but when it when I'm doing the other ones let's say if I'm doing the deep sleep whisper hypnosis ones first of all I'm whispering I need it to be quiet I need to have a background of relative quietness which is practically never even at night there's the train in the background which I don't normally hear during the day so much but because there's less of any other sounds the train seems to be a bit more prominent unless of course they just move the train track closer but that's probably not the case that'd be weird wouldn't it very 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 strange and apparently Prince Harry and Meg, Megan Megany is moving to Canada to live a normal life and that's what the headlines are they're going to Harry and Meghan to step back as senior royals and I think one statement was something about they wanted to be financially independent I would have thought that they both just already have enough money I might be wrong I might be wrong but I thought that she was already a star you know a TV star Megan and Harry was born into money so he must have a few million pounds in the bank anyway and so even if he I don't know if this is true but even if he didn't get any more money given to him every year he would just have well they're both rich they're multi-millionaires so that, that's kind of isn't it that's independently wealthy isn't it financially independent if you've got a few million maybe I don't know I suppose it depends depends what lifestyle you want I guess that's one of the weird things because if I was given a million pounds let's say I won the lottery let's pretend I did the lottery because I don't but if I did the lottery and I won a million different people have uh, different perspectives on what that means which I've struggled to get my <laughs> I have struggled to get my head around it I'll be honest with you I like to listen to two sides of the story I really do I find it's informative educational and sometimes hilarious to hear the different sides of an argument or opinions you know the thing is to me unless someone is already a multi-millionaire which is probably unlikely they're going to be doing the lottery but you never know who knows 
um, a million pound isn't going to change their life if they have if they're already rich however I've never met a rich person that wouldn't that would turn down a million pound or that would turn down a hundred grand or ten grand you know it's rich people look after their money that's why they're rich so I've never met any I've never met any <laughs> I've never met any rich people to be fair but I just I've heard people say oh million pound that's not enough that's not enough for what a million pound okay so how much are you earning right now 28 grand a year so you're earning 28,000 pound a year yeah that's before tax as well so you're taking home probably what 23,000 so let's see how many years so 23,000 so that's 230 grand per decade so 200, 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's over 40 years worth of your wages. 40 years. And you're 40 now. So actually you can retire in 25 years or 30 years. And still have... Yeah, so you can spend that money instead of working and still have 250 grand in the bank just by living off the amount that you earn yearly without working if that makes sense and when you retire from work do you think you'll have 250 grand in the bank you might do hope you do but yeah yeah and he, it's kind of like, well, a million pounds a lot of money for the average person. For me, a hundred thousand pounds is a lot of money. I'd be rich. I would feel rich. If I had ten thousand pounds, I'd feel rich. I've actually heard people say, oh, million, that's not, that's enough, I could buy a house. I said, yeah, yeah, true, that's true. You could buy a house. In fact, depending on where you live, you'd be limited, perhaps. If you wanted to live somewhere in London, in a, a nice area, you wouldn't get much for your million pound you perhaps get a two bedroom house you might not you know if you, you might have to spend more than a million but you definitely you won't get as much as elsewhere but if you're willing to go and live somewhere in the countryside uh, a different part of the country you get a seven bedroom house for maybe half a million with lots of land or for 600,000 700,000 and still have a few hundred grand in the bank to play with or <laughs> I mean I could I could just live here I could have a million pound in the bank live here pay the rent it's 80, probably about 85 pound a week. 84 pound a week it costs. So just pay the rent. And yeah, that'd be quite cool. Get a helicopter to the garage if I wanted to buy, you know, some milk or something. 
you just do silly things. I mean, I'd, what I'd like to do, I think if I was, if like money was no option, money was no option, money, there was no limit. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, does it? If there was no, no limit to how much I could have as far as a lifestyle goes, I've got a few different lifestyles I'd quite like to have. quite like to live in London in the West End so that I could be within walking distance of the theatres the theatres and Soho and the bookshops and the comedy clubs and you know, the Oxford Street, uh, Leicester Square, Trafalgar, you know, just to be around that area so I can get, go wherever. And kind of live that lifestyle. I quite like, you know, going to, it'd be, just have like, going to restaurants, but nice restaurants and, because that's something I've never really done and I might get bored with it if I did do that actually saying that I have done it um, I dated a solicitor in London when I was about 28 and she was a little bit older than me I think or was she younger she might have been younger I don't care. There's not a little difference between that. She she might have been about 26 actually, but she was way more refined than I was. Much higher educated. She was instead of uh, making an absolute fortune as a solicitor or as a lawyer, whatever she was she decided to uh, help people in need so she offered her services on a kind of a basic rate kind of thing so she I think she was helping uh, I think refugees possibly or something like that she did tell me at the time but it's a long time ago and But she was still earning good money. So she lived a nice lifestyle. And she's the only person I dated really that lived that kind of lifestyle that had, I suppose that had money, but I don't know how much money she had and it wasn't really about that, but she used to treat me. And would go to restaurants and would do things that I couldn't afford to do. Um, and I didn't mind. <laughs> I've always been very generous like that. I think if someone wants to pay to take me out to a, a restaurant and to a show, I'm very generous in letting people pay for it. Very, very kind like that. And we went out. A few times. We didn't date for ages, but we were probably a couple of months. And we went out to... Where did we go? We went out to... I can't remember where we went. I think we went and saw Waiting for Godot, in, uh, which had Rick Mal and Adrian Edmondson in a show and now again that was back in 1998 and so saw that and we used to go to these restaurants that were really really nice and it was just something different and I liked it but I would have liked to have been able to I would have liked to be been able to pay 
towards it or you know to be able to sort of pay for us to go out sort of me pay for it I didn't want to actually pay the money but I would have liked to have had the money to pay so I could have spent it on something else and let her pay for <laughs> for the bills <laughs> I think she liked me she actually bought me roses um, was it her or was it someone else no it was someone else it was a different person but she I did like her it was quite nice but we, we just having that going out and instead of going to a pub or just sort of being at home because I never had anywhere to bring people back to so I had to have to go around theirs and you know but she had this place and she shared a house and I was thinking well, if you're why, why are you sharing a house why don't you just have your own flat and I went to this house and it was huge and she had a big bedroom and to this day I've never been in a bathroom better than the bathroom that she had and she shared it with the other two people in the house or there might have been one person I can't remember but huge the bathroom was the size of both my living room and my bedroom together honestly biggest bath I've ever seen there was a a B day in there I found out it was a B day it wasn't a drinking machine a watering machine to drink out of but there was this um, big shower as low you could basically it was enough room for a bed, a wardrobe, a settee, sofa, television. You know, it's a huge room. So, yeah. And the other time I went out. So, although she wasn't... I mean, she might be very wealthy now. She was very good at what she did, I'm sure. And living in London. She could do the kind of job she did. She may well, who knows, she might have 10 children and be, who knows, there's no way of knowing, is there, what anyone's doing from the past, but there was another lady that I used to go out with, but we weren't dating, we were just friends, and she was, she was a comedian, so I met her doing comedy, but she was also a TV director. So she was very, what's the right words, very well off, but also very successful. Yeah, that's what the right words, very successful. Uh, she used to make documentaries and stuff. And she wanted to make a documentary about me, but I was scared because I, I was scared that my nan would see it and she'd find out what I was really like. Um, so I kind of a bit of a missed opportunity. But nevertheless, we went out. She was fine about me not doing it and we went out and we just used to hang out and she'd take me to theatres and because she was kind of in the... not to say on the game, not on the game, but in the the industry, she'd get tickets to concerts and stuff like that, just sort of passed her way. So she'd always have, like, if like art gallery openings and um, various different things going on. It's a very busy social life. And she knew lots of people. It's a complete opposite to my life where I was putting stickers on bits of meat in a factory, you know, for two pounds an hour. And then I was going and seeing her maybe at the weekends. Uh, and she lived in, I think, well, she lived in a big flat in a posh area of London 
with more books than I've ever seen in my life and I'm I'm an avid book collector and she had way more books than I've ever ever it's like like a bookshop her flat was and we just got on really well I think she had a boyfriend and but she wasn't at all interested in me at all but she was very positive and I wasn't as positive as her and I think I quite like being around her because of her positivity because it kind of rubbed off on me a bit and her success because I've not known well I have it's, it's quite weird because I've been I had my life where I was living very very kind of low life existence kind of not low life as in doing horrible bad things but just a very poor financially poor um, pretty much below the bread line you know just on the poverty li- line for many years uh, just getting by but then I'd be going to comedy clubs and I'd be around people that were earning more in one night than I was in a week. Just for 20 minutes. They'd wear more for 20 minutes work on stage than I would in a whole week. And it's like, oh, okay. So I quite aspired to that success, but I didn't have the talent to do it I really just wasn't I didn't have um, I didn't have what it took to to be successful in that sphere at that time and uh, and then hanging around with this friend her name was Helen actually she's a lovely lovely person and we once we were meeting up for lunch and she said oh I've got a friend meet I'm going to meet a friend uh, as well friends joining us and I, f- I thought oh but or actually it's probably the other way around she was meeting a friend and she invited me to go with her that's probably how it really worked out <laughs> that pretty makes more sense actually and we were this top really nice top class restaurant and I was looking at the prices and she said don't look at the prices don't worry about it it's on me and it was expensive I mean beyond again probably a week's wages on that meal which is something that I never would have spent but it's, you know she was very generous and kind you know but Anyway, that's not the point. The thing is, we get there first, and then this bloke turns up, and it's the lead singer of the specials. And I know a lot of people perhaps don't know who the specials are, but they were a huge, huge group in the 80s, but huge in the sense of. Uh, they was such a huge influence on music, world music, at that time. And uh, they had a song called Ghost Town. I think it's this town. Oh, we're going on a ghost town. Everything is being around. Something like that. And that was a number one hit. But anyway, so this famous person sitting opposite me. And just chatting away about life with her. And I'm there, but I didn't I didn't really have anything to contribute towards the conversation because what can I talk about? You know, what do you do? Oh I uh put meat into boxes and stack them onto 
pellets. What do you do? Oh, I travel around the world making music with uh, hugely famous musicians. Oh. Not a lot of in common conversations going to happen there. Which is weird how I'm able to talk for over 300 hours. Was it 319 hours, I think, the last count for these recordings? 319 hours, and I still haven't actually said anything yet. <laughs> 319 hours of nothing. But that is kind of the point, I suppose, really. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And uh, the thing is, this, uh, this lady who was the. She worked for the BBC and then she went freelance. First of all, she wanted to do a documentary on me. And then she wanted me to um, write a sitcom with her. And she wrote the sitcom and wanted me just to add bits. You know, add, add some funny bits or stuff that I found funny. And, you know, and I, I was too lazy to do that. And then... And this is back in, I think I met her probably 1993, still knew her in 1997. In fact, I still knew her in 19... For about 1998 or 1999, because uh, I asked her, I met up with her and asked her if she'd be interested in doing a sitcom, writing a sitcom with me and my friend. And she said yes. And I thought, well, we could do something where we're just sitting there and just talking and see what comes up you know but then me and my friend we didn't fall out over it but we, fall, we fell out in it so while we were trying to do it we fell out because neither of us liked each other's ideas so it didn't really go anywhere and she, she came along anyway and she had this camera that was that big professional professional camera something like, I've never seen one like that before and she was filming us but it was just again another uh, nothing came of it because I didn't come up with the goods again and I think that was kind of my last opportunity with her. I think after that she got a little bit fed up with, you know, I'm, I'm only speaking on my my opinion, but I imagine she would have got a little bit fed up because she'd offered me so many opportunities to potentially be successful. You know, to have a, at least have a crack at it, at writing a sitcom because she knew the people to pitch the sitcom to, to get it on telly. So, you know, so she knew, she had the, uh, she had a f more than a foot in the door. It's just a case of putting the stuff together, making it decent, and then she could get it done and she even the documentary about me she said it's, it's sorted you just got to say yes and we can get it we can stuff basically what she wanted to do was follow me around with a camera 
and do a, a follow me around at work, follow me around doing the comedy, and just see my life, you know? Because she, for some reason, I think I was some kind of anthropological uh, experiment for her. I think she's a little fascinated with my my weirdness. And she found me funny as well, especially when I was moaning. She liked listening to me moaning about stuff. So yeah, that's an opportunity I had and I messed I messed it up or I didn't I didn't grasp it. I should have really grasped it with both hands, both feet, ears, you know, everything. But I don't know, I think there's, there was part of me that was a little bit worried about success or or failure. I suppose it could have been both, to be fair. Worried that maybe she'd put me in a bad light, but why would she? Because she was my friend. It's not like she just suddenly appeared out of nowhere do you want to do a TV show and then you know let's do this she actually was friends with me we used to hang out and do stuff and got on really well and she liked my singing voice as well so yeah I don't know it's um could have been something I could have been someone I could have been somebody isn't that weird could have been on telly I have been on telly a couple of times but I was on telly when I was 10 I was on the Rolf Harris show when I was 10 and then when I was, that was at my school. It's on, it's on YouTube, actually. And then in 1990, 1995, I did a talent show on a channel called Live TV. So I was on telly there. And it, was rec- it wasn't live, but they recorded it and they showed it. And I was just doing some stand-up comedy. So, but that's lost. That video is lost. I don't know. It might be somewhere. It might even be on YouTube somewhere. Like, how weird would that be if I could find it? Um, I got a couple of laughs. Not many. <laughs> but... Uh, it was basically performing to an empty studio, you know. So it was it wasn't an audience or anything. But wow! Outside of that, I don't think I've been on TV. No, it's the only two times I've been on TV. Been in the newspapers, I think three times. Maybe four. I think I might have been in the newspapers at the time of the um, Rolf Harris show. There was a picture of me with probably all the other kids in the news, the local newspaper, probably. So you'd be you'd be hard pushed to sort of find me there. But there was also when I was very little, we had we had the press at the children's home and I think it was I think a celebrity came over or something and there was a newspaper taking pictures so I remember that just vaguely remember it taking pictures of us whether or not I was in those pictures I don't know but it was a picture of like everyone together I think and then in 1990 
I was in the Independent newspaper, the national paper, the Independent, and they did an article about me uh, as a comedian, and there was a big picture of me in black and white smoking a cigarette with long hair, just looking all broody. So, it's, uh, so there was that article, and the last time I was in the newspaper was 2006 where it was the Evening Star or the East Anglian Daily Times so it's online actually and it's uh, me talking about my free hypnosis service uh, pain relief service that I was offering in that at that time so it's uh, yeah, that's that's the last time. But that's the only... It's the only newspaper article that I can find that's actually... They've still got pictures of me. I, I look awful in it. I've got a bald head. And it's a close-up, and it's in colour, and it just looks... It's really bad pictures of me. Yeah, I think... If you're going to take a picture of me, the further away I am from the camera, the better I look. So that's uh, that's the secret. Also, on YouTube, the video of me on the Rolf Harris show, I've watched it a few times. I can't find out where I am because I'm looking and the camera's moving between all the different kids so quickly but I'm pretty sure I think I need to watch it on the big screen that's what I might do actually might watch it on the television rather than the small laptop and I, that way I might be able to picture myself sort of figure out which one I am it's just there's no pictures. I've got no no family albums of me when I was a kid. You know, between the ages of... Well, basically, no, I've really got... There's no pictures of me up to the age of 18. I've got one picture of me at 18 on my 18th birthday with my nanny granddad. Um, outside of that, there's the occasional family picture taken since then over the years but no pictures of me and my brothers as a kid at all which is a shame they've just all been lost and I'd love to see those pictures they're just yeah but they're gone which means I can't I'd like to look at the pictures to see what I looked like when I was like 9 or 10 so then I can say I kind of know in my head because I used to look in the mirror I've got kind of faint memory of it but I'd like to be able to look and say okay that's definitely me because at the time when we watched it on television we I remember my it was on Saturday early evening and my recollection was I was on the TV quite a lot because everyone was cheering every time I was on there like the family and uh, the weird neighbour that was looking through the window so it was quite it was uh, yeah, I need to rewatch it I think Anyway, I do believe that's enough for one day. I wanted to talk about what I'd do if I was a millionaire, but I didn't get around to it. I just, I think it'd be nice to be able to know that this free service that I do and continue to do will just be financed forever pretty much I'd set some kind of um, plan 
financial situation thing going on where the website would be financed for the next I don't know <laughs> forever basically have some kind of trust set up so that all of my recordings would be available to everyone for as long as is possible Yeah, um, this is based on the idea that maybe in the future I'll be producing some really good stuff. That's my plan. I do, you know. Ooh. Sometimes I see adverts and I think, well, I haven't tried those yet. And I remember, I don't have periods. No, it's a, oh look, he's doing, what is he doing, Zoopla, there's some strange adverts on late at night, anyway I'm going to go, thank you for listening, I'm going to go and have something to eat. I shall speak to you tomorrow. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And do something do something nice for yourself today. Or tomorrow when you wake up. Do something nice. Give yourself a little treat. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.